It's big, seemingly impregnable, and yet Bill Ackman, activist investor, is going after, of all companies, Procter & Gamble. Uh, welcome to Mean Street, everyone. I'm Dennis Berman of The Wall Street Journal. Some breaking news this morning. Uh, Bill Ackman, who's uh, made his name going after a number of high-profile companies, perhaps has chosen his biggest target yet, and that is venerable P&G. Drew Dowell, our crack uh, corporate <laughs> bureau chief, is here to tell us. Uh, is Ackman crazy or, or brilliant here? Um, well, you've definitely got a good helping of crazy, right? I mean, Procter & Gamble is a company worth $175 billion. Just getting to a 5% threshold, you know, to trigger a filing with the SEC would take almost $9 billion worth that of investment. And what we're talking about is the actual news that yeah. Ackman is accumulating a stake, a is substantial stake. stake. Yes. Right, exactly. So we understand from, you know, people familiar with the matter that he's accumulating a substantial stake. We still don't know the amount. Um, on the other hand, he's picking a very good moment for this. Like Procter & Gamble for years was this sort of, you know, unassailable, you know, member of, you know, corporate America. Um, but they've really been on the ropes for the last two years under their, you know, CEO Bob McDonald. Um, they're underperforming Unilever and Colgate, for example, big rivals in terms of their share price. Um, analysts are visibly frustrated with the company. They were openly calling for uh, Mr. McDonald's head on the last conference call. There was a call. tremendous conference call. Oh, where, 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 yeah. where the analysts, it was almost like an, an Arab Spring, not yeah, to exactly. belabor the metaphor, uh, but the great imperial Procter & Gamble was under right. attack. Yeah, I mean, like we sort of said in the story, there was no, like, great quarter guys. It was more like, when's the board going to act, guys? Mm -hmm. um, so just open threats. And they're, you know, they're aware of this. He, you know, Mr. McDonald went to Paris, lowered earnings guidance for the second time in three months, you know, last month, and gave a big mea culpa. You know, there's a lot wrong with the company. Well, we saw the chart up there uh, just a moment ago. The shares of Procter & Gamble clearly reacting to Ackman's yeah. involvement in, in the company. But what exactly has gone wrong with P&G, Drew? Well, they've done, um, they've done two things wrong um, that the company sort of readily admits. One is that they were too late getting into emerging markets, so they rushed in more recently, and, and that's hurt them. They weren't big enough when they needed to be bigger. Um, and they allowed costs to get out of control. It's a big, bloated, you know, headquarters-heavy company um, that has a lot of cost reduction to do. And so they're taking some steps in that regard, but pretty much everyone, I think even including some executives of the company, think it's not nearly enough. But but but, but also isn't it the, the fact that a lot of these products really are not priced for, we might, call, might yes. not call them recessionary times, but they ain't good times. No, they're, yeah, they're, that's, they're tough times. Yeah, and that's the bigger point actually, um, that Procter & Gamble is a company that's made its career or it's made its, you know, its, its mark has been to price products at a premium and then try and convince people through heavy advertising Which might to buy be commodity them. products. Tide, presumably you can buy a bunch of, oh, wow, exactly. that was uh, great but, graphic there. There's some actual Tide on the screen. Uh, but commodity products, we're seeing now customers saying, I want generics or I want a store brand that is relatively the same. It's going to cost me 15 to 20 percent less. It's good enough, exactly right. Like since the recession, people are not paying up for these products. So uh, we've seen Ackman's track record so far. Uh, Canadian Pacific Railway, he was pretty successful. He's forced the... Uh, the CEO down and, and forced changes Turned on over the, the board. board. Right. Uh, Target, he, I think we can call that a wash or to a down. And yeah. J.C. Penney, uh, huge investment, huge fanfare. They installed Ron Johnson, the former right. retailing chief at Apple, and that stock has done very poorly. Yeah, uh, you can since say, he arrived. Yeah, it, well, it did well when he announced it, and then poorly once the results start coming in. I mean, I think you could fairly say that it's still a work in progress. I mean, it takes a long time to turn around a ship like J.C. Penney with orders um, that take you know whatever nine months to show up. But yeah, it's clearly a mess. There's no evidence yet that it's working. Their sales have been crushed. And yet, if J.C. Penney is a battleship, then we have to call P&G an aircraft carrier, perhaps or something two aircraft bigger, carriers. Yeah. I, I'm just sort of wondering what, how Ackman makes his case. He's, he's mm -hmm. actually not said anything yet. Right? It's right. just a reporting of a, of a stake inside the company. Yeah. But um, in terms of a, a rhetorical mm -hmm. advantage, uh, I, I guess he's got a lot of material to work with. Yeah, I think you make the case that this is a company with great brands, but poor execution, and for whatever reason, it's become too insular, and it's unable to control its own costs, and that's exactly why you need someone coming in from outside, or outside Cincinnati anyway, to say, you know, this is what needs to be, this is what needs to be changed, and, you know, you're right about prices being a problem, they charge too much, but to be able to bring the price down and not destroy profits, you have to be able to bring your costs down as well. So this is really the problem with P&G. Well, and we're at a fascinating moment here in the sort of the history of business where companies, even though mm -hmm. they may not like an investor getting involved whatsoever, they have to show that they're being accommodating and listening. Right. And this is the statement from P&G. Uh, this is the CFO, John Moeller, who mm -hmm. was here in the journal offices well, he was. today. Yeah. Uh, it was a remarkable uh, coincidence there. He said, we welcome listening and learning from any investor. They do. Which uh, 
they really just love says it. Yeah. nothing. Yeah, they just love it. So yeah. uh, how can we expect P&G to respond here then, Drew? Um, well, we'll see. I mean, I think they'll respond as if they're doing the right thing and listening. And, you know, and part of it depends on what, you know, when uh, Mr. Ackman shows his hand eventually, like how big of a shareholder is he? You know, he's not the only shareholder they have to listen to. So no doubt they'll be out courting other shareholders. No doubt they'll be making the case that, look, Ackman's track record is not necessarily great. You know, you don't want to go whole hog with this guy and, you know, and try and line up support for the changes that they've already announced and, you know, that they're doing. But they're, they're doing this against a backdrop of a lot of skepticism that the company can execute. Right. At least in this case, management does not have uh, necessarily the inherent support of, of a broad set of shareholders. So right. we'll see how this battle plays out. It'll be quite interesting to Definitely see. P&G of all great uh, companies come under yeah. activist attack. Uh, Drew Dowell, thank you so much for joining us.